ולשאנק. לטין ריגד, שאנטינג ג'אנק, from Balkan Shapiards, and I believe this might be the future of Pacific Proes. The way the Lashank works is that it has, it has a rail over here where the tack of the cell slides, slides along. And basically that's what makes shunting so easy. Okay? So there's basically two ways to shunt. You could either come here and push this spreader bar over, or you could just pull your endless line and move your rig. Hi all, I'm Rail Dobkins, president of Balkan Shipyards. For six years now I've been messing with pros and their rigs have, I don't know, blown my mind to pieces. Banging my head against the wall, the whole jazz. Uh, shunting rigs are complicated. I believe that the Le Junk, the Latin rigged shunting junk, has a lot of potential. Um, it's, it's an easy rig to reef, which is the most important thing, especially on multi hulls. It's easy to handle single handed. All lines lead to the cockpit. That's the amazing thing about the junk that the sheet leads to all the battens and you don't have as much cell twist as gaff legs or all these other types of cell have where the top is twisting off you don't have that okay so now let's say let's say we'll close leech in you know flying along at uh, 9.2 knots and uh, it's time to shunt okay so we'd let the sheet go I have to push the sail, but I'm gonna, it's not no big deal. We let the sheet go, the sail comes out to here, now we're on a beam leech, yes? And all we have to do is let the end this line, uncleat the end this line, and really just pull on it. Okay? Whole business is over. We cleat it on the other side, yeah? We sheet in, and off we go. We're on our new shunt. The, the advantage of the cell is the CE position. Because, because it's a balanced cell, that means that a certain percentage of it goes ahead of the mast, in this case, ahead of the yard, because this would be the mast and that's the yard. Except for that, because of that, your CE goes further ahead. You're not hanging your cell off the mast, yes, with your CE far off. You're hanging, you're hanging your cell ahead. There's a certain percentage of, certain percentage of the cell going forward, bringing your CE further forward. On this particular boat, this is a 1 to 10 scale, and I have a 30 centimeter lead of my CE over midship. That's pretty good because on the previous leg that I had on Y North, which was a single clap claw, uh, my CE was about 40-50 centimeters aft of midship. So I'm moving, I'm moving the CE at the moment forward by about 70 centimeters. And that is fundamental to, to, to a shunting vessel because if your CE is not far ahead, the minute you shunt, it falls aft of the CLR the boat gets pushed up into the wind, bow to the wind, caught in irons, and that's the end of you. You're not sailing anywhere. If you're in a clouded anchorage and there's rocks or there's something around and there's hazards and stuff, you don't want that to happen. You want to gain steerage way as soon and as fast as possible after that shunt. The only way to do that is by moving your CE way ahead. For junk leg to work properly, it's very important how, it's, how you hang it and how you set it. There's many little lines that pull the leg and fine tune it and get it into a position and, 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 and help hang it properly. These lines, if they are properly uh, adjusted, you can prevent ugly creases hanging happening 
between the panels, diagonal creases. Um, so basically these lines are called paddles. So yeah, you've got the, the halyard itself on the mast that lifts up the whole leg. But then you have a yard paddle that will pull the sail this way. It connects to the yard and it pulls it to the mast. You will have a throat paddle that again goes to the mast and it will, it will adjust. It works actually in tandem, the two work together and they shape the, and they adjust the angle the leg hangs. Then you've got a tack paddle. I have it leaf, uh, rigged over here. My tack paddle again is working on the luff, yeah? And then there might be Hong Kong paddles. They go from the battens to the mast and again they control your luff. All these lines all lead down onto the spreader bar. Um, they, they come down onto the spreader bar and that means that I have a few cleats over here but basically what's happening here is all lines come to the cockpit. You don't have to go anywhere forward, aft, whatever. You don't have to move from the midship and you can control everything on this rig from the safety of the cockpit at midship. Very important. If you sail a pro, you will get back wounded. It's just a question of time. Uh, so, we, if, this, if this leg is working now and it gets back wounded, the wind comes from here and it hits, and it hits against the sail. Nothing is coming down, lady. Uh, what's happening is the sail is leaning up, is leaning, the sail itself is leaning against the backstay, yeah, and pushing on the backstay, and the tack of the yard is pulling up on the tack rail, and the mast is compressing, is pushing down in, onto the boat. So actually, you have a bunch of forces that all, you know, uh, come together and kind of come out neutral we hope and believe. Forcing you to make a very sturdy tack rail, lean and reinforcing the lee pod in the area where the tack rail is connected to it. Uh, I've got ideas about how I'm going to do that. That's not important at the moment. I believe I'll get that stuff right. I'm not expecting uh, to go racing and to point into the wind like the best of the monohulls, forget that. I'm hoping to do with, it, with, with my crab claw on why not. I was doing just over 45 degrees to the wind. If I can do between 50 and 55 with the reefable junk, I'm in business. So what's the bottom line? Bottom line is I've been messing with pros for about six years now and I messed up quite a few times. I put a screw in a rig on crystal clear, that thing got me in trouble more times than I can count. That, that was a fundamental mistake. Uh, two shunting two cells at once, uh, two crab claws at once is, is, is virtually impossible. Then I uh, went for crab claw, single crab claw, fixed mast onto wire knot. Not bad, works pretty good, but leafing was an issue. Had enough of all this stuff, guys. Um, I've, you know me, eh? I've failed, I've failed quite a few times. I've messed up quite a lot, eh? But like, failing, failing is just part of success, you know? It's just, it's, it's, you know? You can't succeed without failure. Failure is part of success. They walk hand in hand. Basically, guys, I'm going to build this thing. I'm going to share it with you. But I want you to join me. I'm asking for you to kick in and, uh, and give, give me a push over here. Give me a kickstart. Um, I, need, I need a little bit of funding. I don't know, probably a thousand euro will be enough. The expenses, probably to build a rig like this is probably about 200 euro. It's, it's nothing in materials. That's the beauty about the junk rig. You can build them very, very cheap and from very 
low stress, just whatever fabric you can find, so no problem. But until I get it right, you know, I got to pay for the workshop, I got to pay for power, I got to pay for heating, I got to this, I got to that, the car, the telephone, the going, the getting, aluminium poles, this type, that type, taking a boat to test it because I'm banned from sailing in this little town over here because the lake over here is more dangerous than Cape Horn according to the municipality. So, what can I say guys? Um, there's a lot of expenses involved in building it and developing it and if you guys can kick in basically I'm looking for one person that can spare a thousand euro and give us a kickstart two people, five hundred, ten people, a hundred twenty people, fifty whatever you guys got as much as you feel that you want to you know contribute to this and let's just do this thing together I'm going to build it, I'm going to share it, and maybe we can change the future of pros. Maybe we can make them slightly more user friendly and more people will take them out and there'll be more pros floating around the world. And that's what we really want. And that's what Balkan Shipyards has always been about. We've always been about let's build this, let's share this. We've got wild ideas. We're going to make it like this. We're going to make it like that. We don't do what the other guys do. Many guys build really nice pros, you know, they work really well, you know, but these, most of these pros are really expensive to build. <laughs> Over here in Balkan Shipyards, we're playing the game in a different way. We, we're looking at the DIY guy that wants to build this thing at home by himself. He wants to make everything by himself. He don't want no Bermuda rig, okay? Bermuda, yeah, works really well. Good for you, you know, nothing against the Bermuda. It just doesn't fit us, you know, we're, we're a different breed, you know, we, we do things ourselves, you know. Help me over here, let's do this thing together, let's kick ass, <laughs> and let's change the future. Let's bring the past back. All the best guys, Balkan Shipyards. Please share this video, like it, help me, do whatever you can, and uh, if you want to give me a hand, at the bottom of the, underneath in the comments or over here, I'll just put my email at juliasbalkanshipyards at gmail.com. As much as you guys can spare, throw it at me and we're doing it together. Take care guys. All the best. Balkan Shipyards.